Have you recently picked up a new iPhone? Maybe it's the first iPhone you've ever purchased, or maybe you're replacing an older model that you've had for some time. Whatever the reason, your iPhone will be far more enjoyable if you spend a little time learning some tips and tricks. And that's what this video is all about. Welcome to Ellen's Tips for iOS, where I help seniors master their iPhones and iPads. If you find value in the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Have you heard of widgets? Widgets allow you to have quick pieces of information right on your home screen, but too many widgets take up space and don't leave enough room for your apps. A remarkable feature of widgets is that you can stack them. Let's walk through how to do that. Let's start by adding our first widget. To do that, you want to find an empty area of your home screen and then put your finger on it and push and hold. Once you see the apps start to jiggle, you can go ahead and press on the plus sign in the upper left corner. This will take you into the widget area where you can search for widgets or you can just scroll through to see what widgets are available to you. So let's go through and add a few widgets. The first widget I'm going to add is my fitness widget. I'm going to tap on that. And then you'll have options of the size of the widget. I'm going to choose the second option and I'm going to tap on add widget. And now I'm going to go ahead and add one more widget. So I'm going to tap the plus sign. This time I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to add the weather widget. If I want to stack these widgets, I want to add the same size. So I'm going to locate the same size widget and I'm going to tap add widget. And now you'll see that I have two widgets located here. If I grab a widget, push and hold on it and drag it on top of another widget and drop it, that's how you can stack your widgets. When I'm finished, I'm going to tap on done. You can go ahead and add more widgets, you know, as many as you'd like. But once you're finished adding widgets and you've come back onto the home screen, I'm going to go ahead and push and hold on the stack of widgets that we've added. And you're going to see an option to edit stack. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And now below, you're going to see two options. If Smart Rotate is on, your iPhone will do its best to determine which widget you want to see using the time of day and location along with your past behavior. If you don't see the widget of choice, you can just swipe up on the widget until you do. Now, widget suggestions automatically suggest widgets that the user doesn't already have in their stack, perhaps exposing them to widgets they don't even know exist. So you can leave either of those options or both of those options on or off. I'm going to go ahead and tap on done and I'm going to drag this widget that I have at the bottom and I'm going to drag it and drop it on top just so you can see what happens. I'll tap on done and now you'll see, I'll tap on done one more time, that I can rotate through these widgets anytime I want. So I can stack as many widgets, freeing up my home screen for other things. What is back tap? Back tap is an accessibility feature that's useful for everyone. Back tap lets you double or triple tap on the back of your iPhone to trigger an action. A few examples are you can double tap to open the flashlight or triple tap to open the camera. Let me show you how to set this up. So we're going to come into the settings app. We're going to scroll and we're going to tap on accessibility. I'll tap on touch. And then I'm going to scroll to the very bottom where you'll see back tap. I'll tap on that. And then you can set up your options for double tap or triple tap. So I'm going to tap on double tap first. And you'll see that you have a lot of different options. You have system options. You have accessibility options. Go through 
And you even have shortcuts. If you have shortcuts set up, you have shortcut options to run your shortcut. Go through and pick an option that you want. So for double tap, I'm just going to select camera. I'm going to tap on back. I'm going to come into triple tap and I'm going to locate uh, the magnifier. I love using the magnifier. I'm going to tap on magnifier. And now if I double tap on the back of my iPhone, the camera option will open. If I triple tap, the magnifier app will open. Now, here's the catch. You need to have an iPhone 10 or newer device to use back tap. You've probably already figured out that moving your cursor to an area of text can be painful. So here's a tip that makes it more accessible. So I'm inside of uh, my notes app and I have a note open that already has some text. I'm going to tap on the screen so that you can see the keyboard. If I press and hold on the space bar down below here, press and hold, you'll see that the keyboard becomes like the trackpad on your computer or like your mouse. And now you can move your cursor anywhere you need to in that text area. So I can drop the cursor wherever I want, let go, and then the keyboard comes back. So push and hold on the space bar, and that allows you to just drag that cursor to wherever you need it. The iPhone's global search feature is very powerful. Spotlight Search can find apps, photos, documents, emails, messages, search the web, and so much more. There are two options to access uh, Spotlight Search. As you can see at the very bottom, right above the dock, you'll see a search option. I can tap into that, and that puts me into Spotlight Search. Another option is I can just pull down on an empty area of the home screen and that will bring me into Spotlight Search where I can search for anything I need to find on my iPhone or the web. Give it a try. It's really powerful. We all know Siri's voice, but did you know that you can change it? You can choose from all kinds of different options, and maybe you just don't know where to look. What you'll do is you'll come into the Settings app, locate Siri and Search, find Siri Voice, and then choose an option. If I choose an option, Hi, it I'm may Siri. take choose a few minutes like to continues. download that option then go ahead and tap on the voice choices that you have to hear them. And then you can select the voice of Siri that you want to use. Set up your medical ID. This tip could save your life. First responders can see your medical information if entered into your medical ID, which will then be displayed on your lock screen. To do this, you'll want to open the health app, You'll want to toggle your profile picture in the upper right corner. You'll tap on medical ID. And if you haven't entered anything, it will prompt you and walk you through it. If you have, tap on edit, review your information, and update anything that's necessary. You'll also want to scroll down to the bottom where it says emergency access show and locked, toggle that switch on so uh, medical personnel can see it on your lock screen. You also may want to toggle on share during emergency call so that emergency services will receive your medical information. Learn to scan documents. You can quickly scan documents into your notes app and save them to iCloud. To do this, you'll want to open the Notes app. And I have a new note opened. And what I'll need to do is tap on the camera icon at the bottom of the screen. And if you don't see that, you should see a plus sign. Tap on the plus sign to see the controls. And 
tap on the camera icon, and then you're going to see some options. Go ahead and tap on scan documents. And when you do, you're going to see that immediately it starts to scan and start taking pictures. To prevent that from happening, tap auto in the upper right corner. Change that to manual so that you're able to control the scan. This is really great if you have receipts or documents that you want to scan into uh, your notes app. And when you're finished, you'll go ahead and you'll tap on save. And now those scans will be added into uh, your notes app as, a, as an iCloud document. You can go ahead and tap on done and those uh, scans will remain there. I have a full tutorial on scanning in the Notes app, and I'll put a link to that in the description. This video is a little longer than normal. I appreciate you sticking with me. I have a few extra tips that you'll find in a resource guide located in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.